Your cooking is horrible. You are old. And you are retired and are jobless now. There is no value or reason for me to be your husband anymore. I did such a good job being with you. Let's get a divorce ASAP. No alimony. Just the 50-50 split of the joint property including your 200k in retirement. I'm so considerate, right? When my retirement benefits came in, my husband suddenly confronted me with the divorce. The reason was my inadequacy as a wife. In all the decades we've been married, he had never taken care of his family life. I already knew too well what the real reason was. I glanced at his face. He must have thought I was in a state of shock. He had a look of glory as if to say, I brought you to the depths of despair. A truly terrible betrayal, but then, I could retaliate against him with peace of mind, couldn't I? Yes, I suppose so. If we are getting a divorce, we have to settle our finances. Right? Let's get it done, and you get the hell out of my life. You're gonna have to settle it. Huh? I calmly held out something in front of him. His one-way ticket to hell. I am an ordinary housewife, 60 years old this year. I've completed my employment to the full term, and I'm about to retire. When I was younger, it was still rare for women to attend university. I was eager to learn how the world worked and wanted to enjoy my youth, so I decided to continue my study in economics. As I studied, I gradually came to understand how the world was connected to my life. My humble dream was to manage my own restaurant, but I decided to work as a public servant in search of stability. My husband Mark was a classmate of mine at the same university. Although we measured the same, we had little to do with each other at first. We happened to be in the same club in our junior year and started to interact often. A lot of time was spent together at club events and on our thesis research. We gradually became close to each other, but didn't start dating until after graduation. I regularly went out for drinks with him and other university friends and enjoyed our time complaining about each other's workplaces. Among them, we especially got along well and sometimes went out for a drink just the two of us. I didn't dislike him and enjoyed his company on many occasions. One thing led to another. We naturally became an ordinary couple. We normally got together at either of the houses and just laced around on the weekends. I used to cook something simple, and we ate it together or went to a fast food chain. Occasionally, we splurged a little and enjoyed eating at a nice restaurant. Every summer and winter holiday, we took a trip abroad or to other parts of the country. After five years of dating, we decided to get married. I was turning 30, a milestone year for me. I thought it was the right time, and we both agreed it was a good time to start a family. Two years after our marriage, our long-awaited daughter Maggie was born. It was my first experience with pregnancy and childbirth, and I had a lot of worries. Even so, Mark seems to be taking it much easier. I wasn't pleased with him, but managed to put up with his nonchalance in silence. Behind the scenes, there was my sister Stephanie. About the same time I graduated from university, our parents passed away. She got a job right out of high school, and I was already employed, so we were financially stable. We both loved our parents and supported each other through hard times. We lived about a 10 minutes walk apart, and if something happened to either of us, we ran to each other immediately. She was unmarried and not dating anyone. She had a pessimistic view of a relationship as a result of having numerous scumbag boyfriends after high school. The first guy she dated was quite a playboy, who cheated around on her. He had borrowed money from a loan shark under her name 
and went on a spree. Thanks to him, she still carried distrust and avoided meeting men. She understood me well. When I told her I was pregnant and struggling, she cared for me more than anyone else and came over every day to help me with the housework. Mark had an old fashioned idea and refused to do any chores. I was working and doing housework while my morning sickness was so bad. I was totally exhausted until I went on maternity leave. Stephanie really helped me throughout, and I was able to deliver without any problems. Mark was present at the birth, and we were able to share the excitement. However, he abandoned childcare after that. On top of it, he complained about dinner being late and his lack of sleep from a crying baby. He became grumpier by the day. I was grateful for Stephanie, who was coming to help me on those days after work. She also loved kids and took care of Maggie as well. She and Mark got along well, and she was very good at handling his bad mood. Oh my god, Mark, what are you talking about? Drink, drink, drink. Oh yeah? I would take your word for it and have some. I felt I had managed to keep things going because she was there for me through all the hard times. It was hard to balance housework and childcare every day, but just like when we were dating, we kept the tradition and traveling in summer and winter. That was my motivation to push myself hard. Fortunately, Maggie grew up healthy. I was relieved that she was able to enter the university of her choice. She went on to study Spanish at the university. She loved traveling abroad and wished to find a job that she was passionate about. She looked for something she could keep training her skill. After graduation, she became a translator at a trading company. She assisted in translating difficult documents and I couldn't help but be a proud parent. She was finally on her own, and I was approaching my retirement age. I had saved enough money and would receive a large sum of retirement fund. Since I was going to have a lot of time, I wanted to try something new. In the meantime, I noticed something strange. Mark was coming home late those days. Usually, he returned within an hour after he got off of work. But he started coming home at around 10 or 11 p.m. He ate out more often than usual as well. I've been in a slightly better position these days, and I'm going out to entertain my clients. That's why I'm coming home late. I'm about to retire, so it's kind of a last push. I was skeptical that his company was entrusting such an important job to someone so close to retirement. He sounded quite happy about it, so I let it go without questioning him. Later, I asked Stephanie when she came over. Mark has been coming home late lately. He says he's taking out his clients. Could it be that he's having an affair just before he turns 60? Don't be ridiculous. I'm sure he's just putting in his last effort as he says. I know him well too. But he doesn't have that kind of energy anymore, does he? You must know it better than anyone. I was probably overthinking. I imagined a carefree life together when we retired and wanted to enjoy going out like we used to. I didn't want to believe that he was cheating on me at that point and pushed the thought to the back of my head. One day, while all this was going on, I got a call from Maggie. Mom, you like to drink, don't you? I found a stylish bar the other day. Let's go together. Of course it's on me, so don't worry. Wow, you sound so adult now. I will take your word for it. Let's go. I was so happy to hear her all grown up and decided to take the rare opportunity. A few days later, we met for drinks. I knew at a glance that it was the kind of trendy place she liked. It was a cafe bar that mainly served craft beer and wine. The chef, who was well versed in both American and French cuisine, offered a wide range of dishes. 
The atmosphere of the bar was also very cozy and relaxing. You always come to such a nice place? Isn't it quite expensive? Are you making a good living? I don't come here all the time. I only come here on special occasions like tonight. Besides, it's not that expensive. We joked around, enjoying our first outing together in a while. She recently found a boyfriend. He worked at the same company as her and sounded like a prominent employee. Finally, being able to talk about things like this with her moved me deeply, and I almost cried. Then I witnessed a shocking scene. When I went to use the restroom, I saw Mark sitting at the counter. The person sitting next to him was Stephanie. I wondered why he was there with her. He was supposed to be taking his client out that night. I thought about calling out to them, but the way they were behaving didn't look like they were just relatives. They were sitting so close and looked like they were boyfriend and girlfriend. I even saw his arm around his waist, and he had that sweet look on his face like when we used to date. I felt nostalgic and a tightness in my chest all at once. Even if he was drunk, that's a bit much, isn't it? She seems pretty happy though. I was upset, but I calmed myself down and went back to the table. Maggie sensed something from my expression. Mom, what's wrong? Are you okay? No, actually. I told her everything I had seen earlier and said, Well, I guess he must have gotten tired of me. Stephanie is prettier and smarter. This is what happens when you've been together for almost 30 years. Holy cow! He's been having an affair with her? Unbelievable! You don't need to blame yourself. There's nothing wrong with the person being cheated on. The person who cheat has a problem. I'm with you, mom. Don't let him get away with it anymore. I know what you have been going through. Let's make him regret it. She encouraged me to face up to the reality, and I decided to confront him. With advice from her, I started off by secretly taking pictures of them together as evidence. Three months after the shocking encounter, I finally reached retirement. It was a bittersweet moment to realize that I no longer worked there after so many years, but I was also looking forward to my second life. I spent my days doing housework and what I had been wanting to do. Mark was the same age as me, and he was going to retire in six months. Hey, how much do you have in your retirement fund? He asked me a few days after I retired. $200,000. But what is it all of a sudden? It's mine anyway. Yeah, I know that. I'm just asking so that I can visualize how much I will get in six months. I could see that he was screening, but I pretended not to notice. Then, his attitude suddenly changed about two months afterward. We were getting a divorce. Excuse me? What's going on? I've been thinking for a long time that I don't like your cooking. I've never really thought it tasted good. I used to think you were pretty, but now you're older. You've become really haggard. I'm even embarrassed to walk outside with you. You lack empathy too. That's pretty fatal for a woman, don't you think? I don't know how I have been able to put up with you all this time. I've reached my limit, so I want a divorce. Well, that's what you've been thinking all this time. I understand. Let's get a divorce. I can't be with someone who despises me either. I immediately agreed with him. He grinned and spoke enthusiastically. Thank you for all your hard work. Now it's time to talk about our finance. I'm going to take your retirement fund. It's our shared property. I see. Then I will make sure to charge you alimony. Don't you pretend you know nothing? I don't know what you are talking about. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. Do you still insist that you don't know about this? I let out evidence pictures of his affairs on the table. This was two months ago, 
when you said you were taking clients out but meeting Stephanie, and this was, actually, I hired a private detective after I retired and had him collect evidence of the affairs. It turned out that he was meeting her almost every day. No wonder she stopped coming over and didn't contact me anymore. From now until the divorce is finalized, I'm going to stay with Maggie. You can have Stephanie move in and live together. Anyway, I will not be coming back. So long. I packed my suitcase with everything I needed and headed right over to Maggie's house. I informed her of the whole situation and she warmly welcomed me in. I see you finally got it all done. Good job, mother. Make yourself at home until you find your own place. Thank you. I will take up your offer. If your boyfriend comes over or something, I will go somewhere else, so just let me know. From there, I filed for divorce from Mark and several thought claim against Stephanie through the lawyer I had consulted beforehand. I asked him to set the amount of alimony higher than the market rate for a mature divorce. Mark and Stephanie were quite shocked to see the amount and called me in panic. Hey, you're awful. What the hell is this amount? I asked my lawyer and he said this is a reasonable amount. There is no way to hide your fear. So can I ask you not to complain? Stephanie is with you, isn't she? I don't know how long you two have been in a relationship, but I'm pretty angry with her too. She's the only family I have left, but you both better pay up to the last cent. I will leave the rest to my lawyer. Wait a minute. I already relied on your retirement money to buy the car. What am I going to do about that? Why should I care? You bought it, so you pay for it. If you don't have the money, return it or get a loan yourself. Then I hung up on him. After that, I reported the divorce to his boss. I knew him well as he had come over for dinner several times. I figured Mark was going to save his face at work by spreading lies about me. I couldn't allow that to happen. I'm sorry to bother you, but I want to let you know that Mark and I are getting a divorce. What? He never mentioned it with me. What happened? He was having an affair with my sister. What's more, he asked for a divorce and tried to take my retirement money. Can you believe that? That's a serious matter. I will report it to my superiors. From then on, things didn't go the way Mark hoped for. The divorce was finalized, but I was a little concerned about what happened to the car he had purchased. But I didn't have time to worry about other people, so I just forgot about it. A month after Mark retired, he stormed into Margie's house. Her place was kind of cozy, and I couldn't find an apartment I liked, so I was still staying with her. I'm sorry, can we get back together? Paying for alimony is hard, and I'm struggling to live a normal life. He started talking about his recent situation. He had an emotionally very difficult few months at work. as. What I told his boss leaked out from somewhere and made him feel ashamed. He had been looking forward to his retirement fund, but it was reduced drastically due to a tip-off about the wrongdoing he had done behind the scenes. He of course gave up on buying a car. He had not saved much as he somehow depended on me, and his social security wasn't enough to live comfortably. When he was charged a big alimony, he and Stephanie had broken up. They were both struggling to pay up the amount. Stephanie was also counting on my retirement fund and bought a few things. She had a lot of credit card bills and loans that she was in financial trouble. Mark had been abandoned by her and was destined for a lonely second life. You're just after my money, right? Do you realize that you've only been talking about yourself since you got here? I have nothing to do with you anymore. You're the one who cheated on me and tried to steal my money. Kama is a bitch, you know. Now you get out. Wait, wait. I'm really sorry. You're right. He was on his knees pleading. 
The way he did it looks staged. So I was sure he must have done it at work too. Maggie finally spoke up after observing our conversations. Do you know how hard life was for mom? She had been working and taking care of the house all by herself. You never helped her with anything. If she said something, you got cranky, so she kept quiet. I always thought you were an asshole. To top it all off, you cheated on her and tried to rob her. I just can't believe it. And now you ask her to get back together because you need the money. Can you humiliate yourself even more? I never want to see your face again, you traitor. Being told this much by his daughter mortified him that he left in a miserable state. I'm completely freed from Mark now that I'm enjoying a comfortable second life. I found a perfect apartment for myself and have been throwing home parties with my ex co workers and friends. Thanks to my retirement fund and alimony, most of my financial problems have been solved, and I live my life without being tied down by money. I feel like my relationship with my daughter is better than before. I was recently introduced to her boyfriend. He is a nice young man, just as I had imagined. I feel I could trust him with her for the time being. They even take me on trips when they get time off. I guess she doesn't want me to feel lonely, and she says it's her time to pay me back. If there is one thing I can wish for from her, it is to see my grandchildren as soon as possible. I will wait patiently for her to reach that phase. Now that I've settled down, I'm starting to fulfill a dream I had when I was young to run a small cafe. My second life has just begun.